There are lots of variations in the human genome and some of these variants appear to protect against uh, various common diseases like Alzheimer's and diabetes. So in theory, if you edited an embryo so it's got one of these variants, it would confer that protection you see. What this paper is claiming is that if you made loads of these edits, so you introduced like dozens or hundreds of these variants, is that this would add up to a really dramatic effect and mm. would dramatically change your risk of getting these common diseases. They're talking about getting rid of diseases here, but people are immediately going to start thinking about eugenics, making edits that purportedly could improve someone's intelligence or height or all these other things. Yes, obviously there are all kinds of ethical issues involved with editing the genes of our children. And of course one of the big ones, for instance, is if we're going to do this kind of editing, who gets to decide whether it's done? You know, is it going to be government saying you've got to edit the genomes of your kids? Or is it just going to be left to parents? Imagine Russia and North Korea, what would they kind of Mm. impose if, if they were decided to get keen about this kind of uh, gene editing. I do th worry that even if it was uh, this utopian ideal where it was on the NHS and anyone could get it, there's still going to be people without it. You're then going to start to get a, a speciation event between the, the haves and have-nots and you wouldn't want to mate with someone who's still got bad genes, right? Yeah.